So the truth is that Flopzilla Pro is one of the best tools you can use for off-table exploration and analysis, but not everyone knows how to fully use this tool. So I figured I'd run through a hand analysis with you, show you how I would use this tool, along with some other ones as well, to really get some more value in your poker study time. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, AK Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And without further ado, let's jump right into this hand. So this is played at live 2-5. Let's just say under the gun opens, folds around, here decides to call. Oh, not going to really talk about whether this is good or bad, just going to talk about how to utilize the software to explore these kind of spots more in depth. So that way you can explore your own hands and know how to use this tool to leverage your study time better. And we end up going heads up, go to this flop, villain decides to see bet for 25 into 37, and here we are. So at this stage of the game, I would pull out Flopzilla and really start getting to work. So Flopzilla Pro might look a little intimidating, and if you're brand brand new to this software, I would suggest starting with a video that I will link to in the description box, kind of gives you a 101 overview on Flopzilla, but essentially this is it. And in here, we're going to plug in our opponent's range, plug in the board, plug in our whole cards, which we just plug over in the dead cards. And by the way, if you don't have the pie chart up, you can always just go to the gear and use group mode at startup, and that will throw the pie chart over there. It doesn't come turned on as a default, but that's the way you would do it. Anyway, so this is a totally blank setup. I spent a little bit of time and put the hand into Flopzilla already, so I already assigned a range, put the board in, or hide the turn card for a moment there, and essentially this is where we're at. So at this stage in the game, how would we use Flopzilla Pro and analyze the situation? So essentially I would start by looking at the range and seeing how it hits the flop. So over in the middle is where we see these dedicated stats to how their range is hitting the board given our dead cards and our exact hole cards are 10 9 of diamonds in this situation so with all that in mind we notice that our opponent has some over pairs and they have some sets but a lot of hands are sitting right over here in the no made hands and that might surprise people if they haven't done some basic analysis on how common ranges hit common board textures so obviously it goes without saying that a lot of this analysis is going to be based upon the range we assign prefop and what we do in flopzilla pro is we assign that prefop range and then we carry it onward throughout the rest of the hand getting rid of hands as they fall off in a natural way so this is the range that i'm assigning prefop don't worry if you disagree with it you can always do your own analysis with a range that you think hey this is what i think this player is open raising under the gun with in your game totally totally fine no problem but this is the range that i'm assigning and we'll go forward from there so what I would do is I'd say, okay, like what hands do I think that this player is going to see bet for $25 with here? Do I think they're going to see bet their entire C betting range for 25? Or do I think they would bet some hands for maybe 15 bucks and others for 25? Let's just kind of take a more simplified approach for the moment and assume that this is the kind of player who is going to bet 25 with their entire C betting range. And now let's start making some assumptions. And what we do here is in the filter set, we can choose all the hands we think they are going to C bet with. Now, you might just start by saying, okay, I'm going to plug in all of the strong hands. And that makes sense to an extent, except for the fact that is this person going to see bet every single set? Now, they don't have fives and fours in their open raising range, so they only have sets made with pocket jacks exactly. You can see that over in the purple. But if we're like, hey, I don't think they're going to see bet top set in this situation, right? It's really kind of a dryish jack eye board are they really going to be firing there with top set maybe not maybe you think they throw that in their check rate i'm sorry their checking range probably not jack raise probably just their check call so if that's the case then we can just simply remove that right we want to include hands that we think they are going to be c betting with and then we go forward from there and we can do the same thing for every other hand category underneath it so all the over pairs do we think they're always going to see bet queens plus let's just for the moment say we think they're going to do that we think they're going to also see that with all the top pairs and the pocket pairs below top card like tens and eights maybe we think they're going to check those behind so we won't include those make sure that it's grayed out and the last major bucket right is really going to be these no made hands so do we think this is the kind of person who is going to see that a lot of these or very few of these and are they doing the same thing with say ace king as they are with say king 10 suited 
So I think what we can do here is we can go in here and say, yeah, they're probably going to do that with some, and then we can right click and then we can select the hands that we want to. So all the ones with the blue are going to be the ones that we think they're continuing with. And all the ones that we're going to deselect are going to be the ones that we think they're going to check with instead of c-betting. So let's say they're going to do it with their kind of weakish hands. They're just going to kind of turn those into bluffs right now. They're going to check with some of the ace, king, ace, queen, king queen they're going to see bet with some of these hands and let's just say they're going to yeah let's just keep that for the moment so all of those are selected we know that there is a uh, selection made in there because we see this little gear icon that means that some of the hands are included but not all when we're looking at this final number and this is really the key number that we're looking for this is based upon all the hands that we've selected how many of them are still included in this chunk so essentially at this point we're making the assumption that they're going to see bet 46 percent of the time and thus check the other chunk of it and if we're comfortable with that we think that hey that's 100 percent true that we can click it lock it into green and now we notice only the hands that we selected from those filters up above are going to be included going into the next street this is very very important because if you don't do this it can get very very com complicated going into future streets in terms of what hands are actually there whereas maybe they fell off on an earlier street such as say pocket sixes based upon the assumptions we just made so when i'm analyzing a handoff table i like to look at the line that we actually took and in this situation here I decided to call and float but i also like to say hey what are other options that are available and if you use your off table time to analyze things like this you can start finding more creative plays you can start finding hey here's a profitable thing that i wouldn't normally do in real time but because i'm studying it off table it's going to be easier for me to say hey this is one where i could actually go for a raise in this situation so i think it's worth at least spending the off table time maybe five minutes and just saying hey what would a raise do here could that be any good does that make any outright profit that's definitely something worth looking at so let's look at this situation and instead of calling like we did let's just assume that we're going to raise so we can go in Flopzilla, and again, we've already locked in this range. One thing we can do is start going a little further and start adding colors. And the reason why I like adding colors is because we can say, hey, let's include colors that we think they are always going to continue with against arrays and hands that they are not going to continue with. And if they're not continuing often enough, meaning they're folding often enough, maybe this could be a profitable raise. So let's get in here, start clicking around, and let's say green are going to be all the hands we think, yep, they're for sure going to be continuing against against our raise. And let's just say that's over pairs, right? Are they really going to fold queens plus if we raise on jack five, four rainbow? Eh, probably not. And all the other stuff too. Cool. And let's say keeping green. So what other hands, the top pair hands, are they always going to continue with jack X? Eh, probably, right? I, I don't see them like bet folding jack X here. If they're really bet folding that, like we can raise a tremendous amount of bluffs, but let's just assume that they're going to continue with all of their top pairs as well as all of their over pairs. And then obviously the other stuff is just going to be the no made hands and that's going to be kind of the other chunk. So in this situation, we have the green going to be all of their continuance hands that they're going to continue with when we raise and blue is all the hands we think they're going to fold, which again is just kind of those weak junkish hands. And obviously this is assuming then that they're not going to be like bluff three betting in this situation. And let's be honest, more often than not, especially in a live game, that's probably not happening a tremendous amount of the time. So what we can do with that information next is use a simple basic tool say the break even percentage and this is a free tool I'll leave a link for this in the description box too actually name your own price if you decide to add any chips to the pot then you end up getting a bunch of cool stuff with it so it is worthwhile if you want to throw in a few bucks but you can get it for free as well no problem so in this situation what are we risking well let's just say we're going to raise to 80 bucks that's unfair and our reward is the current pot of 62 so let's just throw those numbers in so our risk would be 80 bucks we're fighting for a 62 dollar pot and the break even point is going to be 56 percent. so if they fold more than 56 percent of the time awesome if not not going to be outright profitable and we notice that's not true here right they're going to continue more often than that and as such this would not be a good situation to bluff raise at least in the outright profitable sense 
So that is the way that you can kind of go a step further, utilize Flopzilla Pro in order to look for things other than just the line you took, but also explore some other creative options. And even if that option isn't profitable, at least you got an extra rep with it, and that can be very, very good at the end of the day. All right, so at this point, I'm pretty comfortable with our flop analysis and exploration. So like we said, here did decide to float this out. Turn is a three of hearts, early position checks, and here decides to fire. So at this stage in the game, let's just back up a quick tick and pull Flopzilla back out, throw the three of hearts in on the turn, and continue exploring it. Again, because we locked everything in in the previous street, we noticed that only those hands are continuing going into the turn, which is great and exactly what we want to happen here. So at this stage in the game, what do they have? Well, about a third of their range is going to be the over pairs. So that's that queen's plus. And this is all of the hands, by the way, that they get to the turn with. So what we really have to look at here is what is our opponent checking? right? Because it's not just what hands do they get to the turn with, it's what hands do they have at this exact inflection point. So at that point, meaning after they decided to check. So what we have to deduce here is what do we think that they are checking with in this situation? And that's going to be very, very important for us. So if we pull Fobs a little back up, and just start plugging in the hands that we think that they would check with here. Let's just unclick everything and add in manually and go from there. So let's say that we think they're going to check their no made hands, right? They're just going to take their ace king, ace queen, right? They couldn't even have like backdoor flush draws because it's a rainbow turn card. And let's just assume they're going to check with all of those. And we assume they're going to check with maybe some of the weak top pairs. Maybe we'll say they're checked with like jack 10 and queen jack, but they're keep betting with ace jack and king jack. Again, we're not saying that's good or bad, just that's the assumption we're making. And we'll say that they're going to if they have a gut shot yeah again same concept are they really going to barrel off here you know maybe you think they're going to fire ace queen one more time but again for, for this exercise let's just assume they're not and we notice at this point what we're doing is we're building all of their checking hands so you can build it either way you can build their continuance their double barrel range and then remove it or you can just build their checking range we're building the checking range and we notice that at this point that's happening about 55 percent of the time which means we think they're going to double barrel the turn 45 percent and then check the other 55 that's what we kind of came up with right there and we could lock it in right that moment and the big thing that I look at here is, okay, if we take that range of hands, which is very, very weak by nature of the way that we just uh, created it, where they think they are creating the range, we're in a situation here where what's really happening? They're probably going to fold a lot of the time, which means this bet right here is probably going to be extremely lucrative. So this is a very easy float. So this is obviously something that we want to be looking for and something also worth exploring again. So another tool we could use is the outright bluffing EV calculator, and we can just throw in some numbers. So at this point, the pot we're fighting for is 87 bucks. Our bet size is the 80, is the 70 that we have right up there. And how often do we think our opponent is going to fold in this situation? Well, if we go back to Flopzilla and we're looking at this, how many of these hands are they really going to continue with? You know, they're probably going to continue with the top pairs. So if that's the case, let's just turn that into green. So change that to green, change these hands to green. Perfect. And we notice that they're going to continue 17% of the time, again, assuming that they're going to check call Jack 10 and Queen Jack. And if they're going to fold everything else, then we're in a situation where they are folding a tremendous amount of time, that other 83%. So if we take that number and throw that in here, 83, we notice that this is profitable, outright profitable to the tune of 60 bucks. That is wonderful. That is very, very good news. All of that is very good for us. And as such, this is a very, very easy slam dunk float. Now, again, if we want to go a step further, and we should be doing that in our off-table analysis, another question you could ask yourself is, do I need to risk 70 bucks here? So if we pull Flopzilla back out, I might say, okay, well, let's just say we fired here for, I don't know, 40? Or let's just say 30. If we fired for 30, are they going to continue any differently? And pulling it back up, uh, I don't know. You know, maybe they continue for 30 with the 
Let's do that. Let's assume they're going to continue with their gut shots, right? Because they have a, a butt side gut shot for the wheel. Let's assume they're going to continue with those combinations. So yeah, smaller side, they're going to continue more often. That makes sense. So the green is their continuance. This is their folding. So let's throw that into the calculator and we need to change a couple numbers. So we're saying a $30 bet size instead of 70. And if you bluff, how often do you think they're folding? I think they're folding that 45% of the time, continuing the other 55. And and that's such that is plus 23. So not super great. The other one is definitely better. But if you go back in here and you're like, yeah, I still don't think even for 30 that this is the kind of person who's going to float with a gut shot, then we're in a situation where they're folding a ton. And then we can throw that updated number, right? Continuance of 17, folding of 82, 83. And now also we notice it is a little bit more profitable than our other one. So this is the way, again, we can look at the general analysis of the line actually taken utilizing Flopzilla Pro along the way. And then also just take a moment and think, okay, what are some other options that are available? I don't think checking behind here makes much sense when you can just get this bet away very, very profitably. But then the bet size is a very, very curious thing and definitely worth exploring. All right. And just for the record, there is even more analysis you could do with Flopzilla Pro. So for instance, one thing you could do is turn this into multiplayer mode and you can start analyzing things a little bit from there. So let's just plug this in. And the main change we're going to make here is instead of this being a situation where we have just a single hand, let's assume that we have a range. So we're gonna get rid of our dead cards. We're gonna go over to the second range and we're going to throw in a range for hero. So at this stage in the game, untick all this, and let's just assume the hero has, uh, I don't know, call two bet range, maybe 16%. I'm not saying this is any good. I'm just saying let's make that assumption, and you could run through and do the filtering every single step of the way. Another thing you could do is analyze kind of the hotness, and a lot of people don't utilize this feature, but it's very, very good. And by the way, yeah, one quick thing, just while we're here. So some people will look at this and say, well, okay, I don't want to analyze a range for myself. I just want to analyze my hand. You can actually clear this out. I'm just going to copy all this for a moment and then put it back in in a moment. You can also plug in just a hand. So 10 of diamonds, nine of diamonds, hit enter, and you notice that's the only combination that's in. So you could go forward and just do an analysis with a single hand, but we're going to throw that range that we were using a moment ago and run with that instead. And one of the fun things you can do is go into the hotness and say, okay, how are the next cards going to impact both players? And noticing where you get big equity ups versus big equity decreases can be very, very helpful for understanding, hey, this many cards in the deck are going to be good for me versus not so good for me on a varying scale, of course. So these are some other things you can do within Flubzilla Pro. We're not going to go full into them, but you can look at the full matrix. You can look at the EV graph, again, for your entire range, looking at every single hand within it. You can even do it from the other person's side of things as well if you wanted to. Notice the faded green is the other person's range, whereas the blue is the one you currently have selected, which in this situation was our opponent. Another thing you could do, although I'm not going to go into it in this video just because it's going to take a lot longer and the analysis gets even more deep, is to sync this up with GTO Plus and run it through the GTO Plus solver. This is very, very helpful if you want to do some really intense exploration and not just look at the specific line that was taken, but also look at what the solver says the entire game tree should look like. Again, you can just go to GTO Plus, sync it all up, make sure you have GTO Plus running, and then do everything there. I'll do another video on that in the future if you'd like. Just let me know down in the comments below if you want that kind of video. It gets a little deep, but it's totally worthwhile if you like doing this really, really intricate kind of analysis. But that is going to wrap it up in the general sense. This is roughly how I would use Flopzilla Pro to analyze a hand at the end of the day. Again, exploring the line that's actually taken and also other options that are available on a street by street inflection point by inflection point basis. And by the way, if you like this software, you can always get your own copy today at splitsuit.com slash Zilla, Z-I-L-L-A. It comes not only with the software and two lifetime licenses for Windows PCs, but it also comes with all of my prefabs 
save ranges, and also some extra training videos showing you how you can use the software to do some extra cool stuff. Not just what we did today, but some other very, very cool things, exploring board textures and very specific important board textures as well. Again, you can get all of that at splitsuit.com slash Zilla. And if you have any comments or questions about it, please do not hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out today. If you need anything at all, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you back later with a brand new video. And in the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.